tonight we turn the microphone over to Tommy Summers. Shock me. I finally reached my breaking point. I'm sick of taking Mike's crap. I know this is his show, but today I get to say what I think. Very good. Yeah. Exactly as I scripted it. Be part of Three Sides of the Coin. Leave a video message for us. Head over to threesidesofthecoin.com, click on the video message link, and record your three-minute video. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I am the co-host. Oh, no, I'm the host. I'm Michael the host, Brandvold. Michael Branvold, and as always, I've got my yes man, Tommy Summers. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but I have a feeling this week's episode is going to turn into something we have no idea what's going to come out at the other end because you've been telling me I've got these things I want to talk about and I've been feeling I got to talk about things and as always there's no show prep we're just hitting yeah the and this is going to be a and we're gonna we're gonna the, go with it this is going to be uh, a purging therapy filled hour so wait a second before I get too involved here Okay. I gotta put on my new jacket. Did Paul send that to you? Uh, I I'm not going to say. Okay. I won't say where it came from. I think Paul sent it to you. So as anyway. a thank you. As a thank you for um for, for editing censoring, for, ed for censoring the t shirt. For censoring that t shirt last week. Yeah. Hey, you know, I took the heat. I get to wear a jacket now. Yep, that's true. <laughs> um, no, anyway, seriously, before everybody freaks out again, um, this came from Kiss Museum, Peter Arquette, kissmuseum.com. Didn't send it to me free. I bought it. It goes with my Kiss Alive Paul Stanley platform boots. Now, will you wear that out on the street? Like if you're going to go, say, to, I don't know, a, a, a Niners game this no. fall. That would be fantastic. It is. I, it's a cool jacket, but it's it's a very cheap jacket. It's pleather. It's pleather. Yeah. And boy, does it reek like like chemicals. I mean, like if you held oh, a sure. if you held a match to me right now, there'd be. It would <laughs> melt to you. <laughs> it would. Oh, but um, Kiss Museum has a bunch of the Halloween costumes on sale. I don't know why if they're being discontinued or he's just getting rid of inventory. But this jacket was like. 60 bucks was shipping okay well if you guys are interested go see peter it. So it was good it's a good deal yep, go talk to peter he'll, talk he'll to take peter care of kiss museum so um anyway i think the best way to start this show is we're gonna turn the microphone over to tommy summers no 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 wait a second okay so then if i'm running things i want to hear all about uh you know what we do every week at the beginning you tell me you seriously love the housekeeping? I love it. It's my favorite part of the show. See, people, it's not my fault. Tommy <laughs> loves it, and I oh, didn't tell him. Fault. I didn't tell him to say that. I never said it wasn't your fault. It's always my fault. No, we should. We should do housekeeping. How, 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 we should okay, do how, a... housekeeping, housekeeping, housekeeping. Um, let's let's focus on the um, the smartphone apps for the Android and iOS. Um, go download them, go to the Google Play Store, go to the Apple Store, search for th three sides of the coin. Looks like you're eating a baby turd. Got it out of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, download our smartphone apps. They're 100% free. You get the... It's no big deal. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good invitation. Uh, you get the newest episode as soon as it goes live on Spreaker, which usually means 24 hours before it goes live on YouTube. You get it in your smartphone app. So go download it, leave some reviews, rate it over there. We love it. We love it. We love it. Um, there you go. That was my 20 minutes of housekeeping. Okay. 
I love it. Got a comment? Yeah, I actually have two. Sounds like people are kind of um, getting a kick out of the latest episode with Mr. Presley. And I'm happy for that because we like to mix it up a little bit. And so two comments. One from uh, Patrick Olson. I love the new guy on the 84 episode. So I'm assuming he's talking about Izzy. So thank you. And the other one is from uh, Dean Pascarella. Uh, you guys make every Tuesday great. Thank you. It's Sometimes it's just nice to, to read a nice one. and It's you know. nice to hear from people who are nice. It's nice to be nice <laughs> to the nice. It is. <laughs> it is. Oh, Lord. So, yeah, thank you guys for writing in. And I'm glad you enjoyed the latest show. And for those of you that don't or didn't. Oh. Oh, 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 where the hell did that come from? I told me to do it. See, put your finger up. See what happens. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God, Rick, it was not my idea. Uh-oh. Hey, guys, this is Mark from Oklahoma. I've been listening to some of the episodes, and you've been talking about television appearances that make an impact. Well, for me, it was seeing the Tokyo 1977 footage on HBO sometime around 1979 or 1980. I was over at my uncle's house with my dad. Uh, my cousins had HBO on, and I just remember seeing this band in makeup. I had no idea who they were. I hadn't heard that kind of music before, but I remember turning to my aunt and breaking into some air guitar. And that was it. That image stuck with me. And from that moment, I've been a fan. Actually, it took me until 1986 when to buy a Kiss album. I actually bought Destroyer as my first one. Didn't buy Silent. Uh, did not like the music I was hearing from that, but I went for the earlier stuff. And bought all the albums from the 70s. I actually did not buy Asylum or Crazy Nights until the remastered CDs came out in 1997, which would make Hot in the Shade the first brand new studio album that I ever bought. So for me, it's the Tokyo 77 television special on HBO. That eventually led to me becoming a KISS fan. Uh, thanks for uh, what you guys are doing. Uh, watch several episodes, enjoying it, and keep doing it. See you guys later. Bye. Hey, Three Sides fans. Mark Chikini here from Detroit Rock City. We're going to take a look at a couple of uh, books that came out in the 70s. Uh, first, the Headliners book. This one's pretty popular by John Swenson. It's got all kinds of... You know, let me show you black and white pictures in it, and the original issue, which uh, this one has, whoop, came with a pull-out poster. So you'll know yours is original if it has this poster. And yes, it opens up. I'm going to try not to rip my book while I'm showing it to you guys, but uh, that's what the poster looks like. Uh, there was also another version of this. This came out in 1980. It's the same book. It's uh, now called the Greatest Rock Show on Earth. Like I said, these two are the same book, although the one that came out in 1980 has um, some of the same pictures, but uh, they also added more pictures and a different cover. Uh, the other more popular book was uh, by Robert Duncan. Now, Robert Duncan was uh, one of the big writers over at Cream Magazine. I was a huge Cream fan. Also, uh, being from Detroit, Cream was uh, located here. Um, it's pretty cool. They got uh, all kinds of, once again, black and white pictures in there. Really good read, interesting, too, uh, just because it has the cr uh, Cream sense of humor. There's also, and this is the best version, I think, the Japanese version. It's bigger compared to two. Bigger. Also, the cover comes off, as you can see. It's black and white under there. But uh, got some awesome, just freaking awesome color pictures in here. can't really show you all of them, but uh, take my word for it. They have color pictures in this one, more pictures and different graphics. 
And lastly, the uh, I always call this the poor man's version of this, the savvy kiss of death. It's actually the same book, same Robert Duncan book, same book as uh, as this one, and uh, some cool cover. And uh, it's got a bunch of different pictures that uh, weren't in the original. Uh, it's kind of hard to to get to those, but uh, like I said, this one's uh, this one's the same book as the Robert Duncan one. Anyways, uh, that's about all my time for today. I still don't have a name for my segment. I uh, talked to you that I like Doug the Mar uh, the Archives thing. I thought was kind of cool. But, uh, you know, uh, let Tommy and uh, Mike know what you think. And hopefully by next segment, um, we'll have a title. I'm off to see Kiss in uh, Florida. Hopefully you see some of you fans down there, too. See ya. Bye. So, anyways, um... Where should we go from here? What would you like to talk about? Anything um, in particular you want me to start? Well, let's see. I've got I've got topics. I've got a few things that I would chat about on the the new episode. Um, I want to talk about our poll results. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you guys are just such a douchebags. It's unbelievable. Wait a second. I didn't tell him to say that. I might have called you dicks on Facebook, but Tommy just called you a douchebag on our show, okay? Well, it's just, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people who listen to this show who really enjoy it and are curious like we are with the poll, but leave it to a handful of people who just have to, like, wreck the whole thing just for the sake so, of wrecking so, it. So, so last week we read through the top ten where it stood before it got crapped upon. Mm -hmm. Now it's a totally crapped upon poll. There's been um, over 2,000 votes cast. Most of them probably by about three or four people. <clears throat> Get a life. Um, here's the top ten. Fractured Mirror. With 11% of the votes. Exciter, 8% of the votes. I think Exciter's a great song, but there's no way in hell the majority of the KISS population is voting that as the number two song. It's much more believable, though, Fracture Mirror. Oh, yeah. 2,000 Man, 8% of the votes. Flaming Youth, 8%. Beth, 8%. I, 5%. Rocket Ride, 4%, Strange Ways, 3%, Nowhere to Run, 3%, I Love It Loud, 3%, Torpedo Girl, 3%. Then actually from that point onward, then we get into what I would consider the actual real songs that would have made it if this okay. hadn't been crapped upon. I Stole Your Love, Deuce, Mr. Blackwell, Great Expectations, Mr. Speed, Parasite, Unholy, Shock Me, Creatures of the Night, Black Diamond, Tears Are Falling. And this is after I had removed two songs. Aren't you surprised, though, that um, Mr. Blackwell is on that list? Um, a little bit. Not that it's not a not, it's not that it's not a good song, but I don't know. I'm but, surprised by that one and Great Expectations. That one surprises me so, also. So, so here's here's what gets me is this is a poll to set to to select a set list for Kiss to play. Remember, Kiss is Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Tommy Thayer, and Eric Singer. So, all of you lovely Kool-Aid drinking Ace Frehley fans who voted up Fractured Mirror 2000 Man and Rocket Ride, I can only assume that means you want to hear Tommy Thayer play those songs and sing them live in concert. Thank you for admitting the truth that you guys actually really like Tommy Thayer. There you go. That actually, that's the most, um, or the largest poll result out of the whole poll. Yeah. Because we now the, know. The, the Ace Fraley fans really have no issue with Tommy Thayer. And they would love to hear Tommy do Fractured Mirror as a guitar solo live in concert. Yeah, it's all, it's all about the songs. It is. It's about mm -hmm. the songs. It's not about the person. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> Anyway, didn't think so, about that, did you guys? Yeah, you, you guys didn't think about that as you were sitting in your basement on a Saturday night, voting a hundred different times on these songs. And I know you were because everything is logged in the back end of a server. Meaning, I've got logs of when these votes were cast, and 
IP addresses of everybody who cast them. So let me just open up a log file right now and let's just discuss a couple of them that were um, so here. I'm going to go to... Right, and as Mike is doing that, we've discussed this and what we think we're going to do with Mike's permission, of course. It's my show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we thought we would put up a new poll and clarify the idea that this is for the current lineup of KISS who is touring right now. What songs would you like to hear? We're going to open it all up again so you can vote in any song. And then we'll follow it up with the poll to try to get to the top 15 or 20. But you can't vote for any Peter songs and you can't vote for any Ace songs unless you are fine with the fact that Eric or Tommy will be performing them. You would think that would make sense considering there's only one kiss out there right now, and that's what we were well, yeah, this and, set and, was for. And, yeah, and, we weren't and, talking and, about and Ace think, and Peter coming back. I think Tommy Thayer's going to get a kick out of this set list results when I send it to him and say, here's what the fans voted for. The fans selected these songs. Yeah, can you work <laughs> Fractured Mirror into your solo? <laughs> <laughs> Rocket Ride 2000 Man and Fractured Mirror. They're not interested in Shock Me. They want to hear you do, Let's do 2000 Man. <laughs> so, um, IP address 72.218.116. And I won't put the last number in there. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, I want to do an IP trace. And this guy was voting about 6.30 Friday evening, last Friday evening. Hundreds of votes. Hundreds of votes. He was voting for um, 2,000 Man, Fractured Mirror, and Rocket Ride. Just vote after vote after vote. About every two minutes, he just sat there and voted and voted and voted and voted. So when I run this IP address, I'm going to get a little nice map that shows me where you're located, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if it was coming from Ace's house? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing coming from San Diego. Um, basically, coming from um, East Coast, <clears throat> we'll just leave it at that, and uh, the the other person who was doing a ton of voting is for for Ace is from uh, Australia. Oh, down under. Yeah. So I'm just like, dude, you it's just like, let's see, at at 53 minutes you voted, at 53 minutes you voted, at 9 minutes you voted, at 5 minutes you voted, at 1 minute after you voted. It's just sort of like, really? This is this is how you're going to you spend your Friday evening? Yeah. Well, and this is why you can't believe any of the polls in the magazines either, you know, or the top 500 songs on Memorial Weekend because yep. you've got people like this that just keep voting and all of a sudden it's Turn the Page by Bob Seger is the number one song. There's just page like, after page after page in the log file of this guy in the East Coast voting for 2000 Man, <laughs> Fractured Mirror, and Rocket Ride. Um, which I like all of those songs. And he, I also want to say, well, look, we're Ace fans. We really are, even though you all believe please, we're haters. Please, but please, here's please. the issue. I can choose what I like or don't like. And I can have an opinion. And Ace puts on his pants one leg at a time. He's a human being. And he's prone to mistakes just like all the rest of us. So when he does something stupid, we're going to call him out just like we would any of the other members. So it's not that I wouldn't like to see him with Kiss or that I wouldn't want to see him perform. I'll go out and buy his record. I'll support his tour. I would love to see him come out and tour. I'll go. I'll even actually drive to several different locations, if at all possible, to see the tour. But he's not in the band right now. So, you know... I just, I don't get it, Tommy. It's just like, is it... Well, I'm do, hoping do, someone do, will do, do, chime do, in. Do we need to beat people over the heads every week about this sort of stuff? You know, you've been crying for 10, 10 years about this lineup, and, and it's only gotten bigger and better, and it's not going away, 
at what point do you sit here and go, yeah, I guess I guess my whining isn't going to work. Mom and Dad are just ignoring me after 10 years of whining, throwing the tantrum on the living room floor. Yeah, it's over. They're, they're, I can't see them getting back together. So you move on with them or you move on without them. It's your choice, but you can't make something happen that's not going to happen. And give you up know? trying and, to ruin it for everybody else. That. Well, and I'd like to hear from some of those people like that would do this kind of thing just because I'm curious. And for all of you people who are already sitting here watching the show going, you guys suck. They're not talking about Kiss and blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you something. When we decided to do this show, we both agreed that not only would we talk about the band, we would also talk about the fans because those two are like this. The fans are intertwined with the band and they're an equally important part of this whole thing. So when Mike and I are doing this show every week and we see this kind of crap happening, to me it's worth talking about. You know, so and, that's why. And, and, and listen, I last week when we recorded that episode and we went through the set list as it was standing before it got crapped upon, Go back and listen to it. We actually were looking forward to seeing the results and discussing some real results of what KISS fans would like to see. Yeah, I thought it would we be really have, cool We could have had see. a very cool um, discussion going here on KISS set list. Instead, yeah. we're, gonna, we've, we're talking about a, a, a poll of a set list that's useless because a couple people... And if you people are listening, want to chime in on Facebook and say it was me, tell us why you did it. Tell us why. We're not going to. Yeah. Tell we're us not gonna... why, why you felt it was important to come in here and and destroy the results of a poll and sway them from to, to, to exactly being what you want. Tell yeah. us. I I guarantee you they won't. Mm -mm. I guarantee I'd you they won't. Know, I can't. I can't. You know, a quick aside. I can't. Well, we'll get into it in, a, in a, an upcoming topic later and later down the the road here in this show. Um, you guys, you, you, we could have had a cool discussion. Is what it comes down to. Could have had a cool mm -hmm. kiss related discussion. Instead, as I said online to people who thought it was just terrible of me to call the fans who did this a bunch of dicks i'm sorry i spent i don't know how many hours putting together this poll building the making the post pulling the answers off of facebook putting them into here creating the playlists to have something cool because we weren't planning to do this it just sort of grew on its own when i asked that one question about what is the one kiss song you would keep we had no intentions of going down this path with a set list poll, but it just sort of right. happened. And I was just like, wow, this is kind of cool. All right. I'm going to put, put a few hours into this and then to have a couple people screw it over and damn straight. I'm going to get pissed. Well, yeah, because this takes a lot of work and time. We bring you the show every single week and we know a lot of you appreciate it. And we certainly appreciate the support that you show by interacting on the, on the YouTube page or, um, on the Facebook page or listening on Spreaker, iTunes, and all of that. So we really appreciate that. But we're doing this for ourselves as much as we are for you. But when you guys say, hey, we're interested in talking about these things, we try to make this happen. And we've had several people who have said, hey, we really like to have a show on the instruments that Kiss has used throughout the years, specifically the guitars. So guess what? We're working on trying to put Which one together. Me, but if we're going to do it. follow up with that guy on that. Well, yeah, I've got a couple of different ideas. But the point being is we want to bring something to you that's really cool. So, yeah, I was looking forward to having the discussion to see really how accurate. Because how can you be a KISS fan and not be curious when you're complaining about the set list if they're actually doing it on their own with no forethought to any of the fans or if what the fans are telling them is really why they're playing what they're playing? I thought it would be an interesting idea. So we're going to redo it. Because we want to see what will happen. And hopefully people will be respectful this time. And I think we should bump it up to five rather than three songs to vote. Because a lot of people just couldn't do three. Because they felt that was too short of a list. We are just trying to control it so that it doesn't end up happening what just happened. With somebody you know, voting a hundred times or whatever it was for one particular song. Right, right. So we're, we're going we're gonna to set it up and do it again. Yep. You know? So I, unfortunately you know, you're going to have to register with the website. I'm going to have to make you jump through a couple more hoops in order to do this. 
Mm -hmm. um, rather than making it easy for you, but you're going to have to come to the website. You're going to have mm -hmm. to actually create an account, register on the website, and um, you're going to have uh, your voting tracked. Because mm -hmm. I'd rather have a run, uh, 100 real people saying this is what I like than 2,000, than, than, you know. Than two people sitting in their basement on a Friday night with nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Don't get pissed at me for calling them that because that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anyway, anyway, let's see. I wanted to talk about the poll, but we just kind of did that. Um Kiss announced the Las Vegas residency. Um, we can chat about that. And Ace Fraley um, also announced the special deluxe edition Digipack cover for Space Invader. Let's chat about that real briefly so we don't have to talk about the guy that we hate intensely ever yeah. again, right? Um, the new Digipack cover meaning it's a cover for the physical cd it's it's a fold it's a cardboard fold out it's not your regular tray card type of thing um the cover is the same artwork but they went back to using that comic book style logo for space invader and ace fraley that ace has used on his facebook page it's which is I, cool and we talked about this few weeks ago i loved it i think yeah at some, at some point i think i threw up a a mock-up i made on our facebook page of what it could look like if they went back to it well not saying anything but they're doing it they they're releasing a digipack with the the movie poster style space invader ace fraley logo and Which i think it looks cool. freaking awesome and for all you people who insist i freaking hate them I've already placed my pre-order on Amazon.com so I can get this. There you go. I've also pre-ordered the digital release on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Which supposedly is August something. Hater I am. I've already bought two of his copies. I know. All right, so there you go. Check it out. I mean, definitely check it out. I think it's August yeah. August 19th is when it's released. But if you head over to Amazon, you can pre-order the Digipack cover. I yeah, and get out there and support Ace because the more units he sells, the better likelihood there will be a tour. Yep. So what, what what's on your mind? We're turning the microphone well, over to Tommy Summers, so shock us. Okay. Well, I don't know if I can shock you, but I had a couple things I wanted to discuss. And so this is going to be a discussion that also includes Motley Crue today. Because most of you that are listening have also shared with me that you also you like Motley Crue as well and Alice Cooper. So I went and saw Motley Crue and Alice Cooper over the weekend in Des Moines, as many of you know. And it was a really interesting experience for me. And now I haven't seen the new KISS tour yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be somewhat similar to what I've seen here over the last year or so. These are the things that struck me, okay? And this is nothing negative towards Def Leppard. But Alice Cooper, it was so great to see him in a large arena again. That's where he belongs. I've forgotten that because it's been so many years since I've seen that. And he brought it. And I, I love the fact that Motley must have encouraged him to bring everything because he did it all. He had the big Frankenstein, the guillotine, all of the stuff that you'd expect out of Alice Cooper. And it was just one great song after another. And his band is fantastic. I, I just thought it was a perfect compliment to Motley Crue. So then Motley Crue comes out and this is, you know, granted it's their farewell tour and whatnot, but I would say that Alice Cooper and Def Leppard are probably similar in the respect of the number of bodies they would pull to a concert, at least at this point in their career. And with Motley Crue, not only did they let Alice play well over an hour and do his thing, they played for two hours. They played, I think, at least 22 songs or maybe say, longer. Wasn't it like 25, 24, 25 songs? It might have. I've never counted it. Yeah, I've never counted it. But I remember thinking, I can't believe they're still playing. So it was literally like seeing them on their own with a full show, plus they gave you Alice Cooper. 
Mm-hmm. And I just thought, no one's going to beat this this year. And, and so to me, there's absolutely no excuse for Kiss to not play 20 or 25 songs. Well, unless, it's, I, unless it's purely a, a physical excuse mm-hmm. that Paul can't do it. But have you heard him say that? No. Well, no. And you're right. I don't I would, buy I would, that. I would, I would, I, I would I love don't. to hear them be honest and upfront as to why, but I, I, I'm honestly suspect that's the reason that that Paul can't handle a 25 song set with his voice anymore. Yeah, but he doesn't have to. That's kind of the point. So then let's do this. Let's add uh, three or four. Okay, so we're at 14 right now. So we need another 10. So let's add four more Gene songs. Okay, pick them, whatever. You can add three Eric Singers and three Tommy Thayers. And you got your extra 10. And then Paul's just there playing guitar. And there's a bunch of stuff I, I would you love know, to see I, them I don't, do. I don't want to hear, no, no offense to Tommy, because he's a super great guy and super nice, but I don't want to hear Tommy sing. He's just he's not, a, he's not a lead vocalist. He's even admitted that. Well, that's fine, but he could do Lightning Strikes. I love that song. So let him do one, let Eric have three, and then give Gene six more. I don't really care. The point being is it doesn't have to be more Paul Stanley songs, but it could certainly be a longer show with I, more I would just songs. love to hear why they aren't doing a longer show. That's it. Just yeah. tell me why. And, 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 and if the reason is because of physical issues, I'll respect that. I mean, I, I can't. You, no, no, nobody can deny the fact that, okay, maybe, maybe Paul, because of his knees and hips and everything else, can't go for 25 songs without breaking down an excruciating pain maybe gene's got an issue maybe, i don't know just tell us don't don't act like you're the same band you were 40 years ago because you're not right and and i'm fine with that um and the other thing that really struck me is when motley Crue did that carnival of sins tour i remember thinking with the circus tent and the way they set the whole thing up, this is what KISS should have done for Psycho Circus. I agree. Okay, well, I can tell you right now, sitting in that audience, again, I'm thinking to myself, this is what KISS should have done. And this is not about Tommy's roller coaster thing. That was a neat bit. It was cool. But that's not what made the show. This was – what was interesting about this, even if it was mostly just props – is the stage looked like a stage that you would see in a dome shoved into a large arena. I mean, it was two, three stories high. It, w- it, f- it was huge. Just that alone was impressive. And then all of the lighting, the pyro, they, ha- they have outdone KISS in a major way. Well, the, I, and, think, I think they've outdone KISS every tour since Motley reunited with the Carnival of Sins tour? Not every tour, because a couple of them have been less. But I would say the Carnival of Sins and this one, they took it to another level. Uh, it, it's If you get a chance and you like the band, you got to go see it. That's all I can you know, say. What, what, why I say they, they've, they've beaten Kiss every tour is because, in my mind, every tour Motley Crue comes out with a new stage. Whether mm-hmm. you like the stage or not, it's a different stage. And they're not relying on the same gags right. for each person, each time. I mean, if they were, Tommy would be doing a drum solo at a 45-degree angle because that's what he did on 1983. The- the Theater of Pain tour. And they'd be running that same gag. We got to the point where we know there's going to be a drum solo gag, but we don't know what it is. And, and what we've gotten with KISS is we know Gene Simmons is going to fly, and we know exactly how he's going to fly and where he's going to fly. We know and when Paul's, he's going to do it. And when he's going to do it. And we know Paul Stanley is going to fly, and we know exactly how he's going to do it and where he's going to fly to. And uh, that, that, there's your gags. There's your gags. Those gags have been – Gene's been flying since, what, 1979? Yeah, I'd say first, on and off. When he first yeah. started it. I mean, obviously he didn't do it every single tour during the 80s, 
but the first time he did it was Dynasty, wasn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. In some cities, but not all. Not yes. all, but yeah. so that gag has not evolved other than it's a smaller wire and he flies up faster and boom, there you go. I mean, yeah. it, it, t to me, it would be as simple as saying, okay, we know Gene's got to fly, but what if Gene, what if Gene flies out to the, the soundboard and does it out there and spits blood over the audience as he's flying out. Wow, different. Same right. same concept of a gag, but different. What if Paul, I don't know, what if Paul does it? The, the whole point is, in my eyes, Motley Crue has changed every tour. Yes. Kiss has not. Yes, we've got the spider, and I think the spider's really cool, the yeah, I'm not trying just, to. The spider is just rigging. That's mm -hmm. that's that's rigging. Um, the rest of this Kiss show has really not evolved or changed at all. Even when Tommy was doing his solos, what was he doing? He was shooting rockets off. Right. Well, and like, look at take Nikki for instance. Okay, two tours ago, I think, or maybe it was the last one. I don't recall. He had a bass that shot flames out of the end or the, the head of his right. bass guitar. Well, now he's got this rig that's attached to the front of the bass that goes out at like a 45 yeah. degree angle. And this thing shoots literally a flame. I shit you not, 100 feet. I've seen it's it. like, it's amazing. And then on top of it, you know, instead of just the regular fire shooting up like this, they have these things now that the, fi the flames go like this. And they have incorporated the lighting rig into a pentagram yep. and that they, they've changed everything. And I feel like they have raised it to a level that kiss should look at them and go, God, we've really kind of sat on our butts. They should, you know, right? and there's, and there's no reason that they can't do that. I, I agree. I agree. I've, al I, I, I've always felt like, Kiss shouldn't have to compete with any other band out there. Kiss should compete with themselves. And what that meant was, you know, in the 80s, up and up until the reunion tour, every Kiss tour was different. They looked at their last tour and said, how do we make that better? How is Revenge better than yeah. Hot in the Shade? How is Hot in the Shade better than Crazy Nights? How is Hot Crazy Nights better than Asylum, which is better than Animalize? You know, they don't, I don't feel like they're, they, they do that anymore. But I also would argue with you that I was not a huge fan um, as much as you were with the uh, crazy or not crazy nights hot in the shade or the revenge tour because I didn't like the concept. I thought the Sphinx with the that just was stupid to me, and I was not a big fan of the Statue of Liberty thing. I just but 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 this, this is this is this is not whether we like it or not. It was different. Totally. Yeah, I got they're, they're, kudos to them. And and I'm also not saying you shouldn't go see the new tour. I'm not saying that I'm not going to go see the new tour. But what I'm saying is, is that the Motley Crue show was so incredibly good that it it's going to make me look at you're gonna the Def Leppard you're gonna, Kiss You're going to compare Kiss to Motley Crue because of how jaw-dropping Motley Crue was. And I think I'll, I'll compare Motley Crue to everything else that I see. And, and I was having a discussion this morning with a friend of mine, Dave, who's not a Kiss fan at all, doesn't like Motley Crue. He likes, you know, Bob Dylan and stuff. He's a hippie. And um, he posted something that was really interesting about how music affects you and how music affects the people. People don't affect the music, meaning that everyone's different. Everyone likes something different. And one is just as valid as the next. So of course they say, well, that's why I love Motley Crue so much and post a photo of Nikki six on his page, which just, he's like, Oh my God, no, because he, you know, posts Bob Dylan and things like that. But the point being is that I said to him, like, you know, you're judging something that you know nothing about. You need to go see this Motley Crue show because I think that it will redefine your view on what a touring act should be. And I don't care if you're a country western artist or you're Bob Dylan, uh, Paul McCartney, whomever. You should aspire to be the best and to bring the best thing you can to your fans. And I feel like Kiss has done that for a lot of years. I really believe they have. But this new Motley Crue tour really is incredible and it's over the top and it's a must see. And I'm fearful that when I go see the Kiss show, I may walk away not thinking the same thing. 
I think if you compared the KISS show to a KISS show, you'd go, wow, this is pretty cool. But the problem is you've got all this other stuff that's already entered your mind, Motley Crue and all these other shows you've gone to, and you're going to go, it's not the same. I mean, in this day and age, everybody can have pyro as big as KISS. Everybody can have as many yeah. lights as KISS. Everybody can have a flying rig. Um, you know, Pink flies more. She does acrobatics. So, so, yeah. so you can't say that KISS is showing people how to do it because they're not. No, and that's what's disheartening. And it's not that the pyro level um, was so much more for Motley Crue than it was for Kiss, but it's that it was different. They changed things up, like Mike was saying. It's not the what same you gag. Do with it. It's a different twist on what you're doing. And I don't know. I, I thought it was incredible. The one complaint I would have, and I've mentioned this online, and I want I want to talk about this now because it really bugs the shit out of me. I have found um, taking photographs to be very therapeutic. I really enjoy it. To me, it adds to the concert experience. So I go to these shows and I always take my camera with me just simply because I really enjoy doing it. I don't sell them. I post them for people to enjoy. You can share them. I, I don't care. I mean, there's no dollar value to me at all with this you know and i even emailed Andy andy beersack about the, you saw that mike this week because i'm frustrated i was denied taking in my smaller camera to the motley Crue show and i think it's because of nikki and if i'm wrong i apologize right now i don't know this for a fact but i feel like he is getting like kiss where they're trying to control their image too much and they have to remember that there's a lot of fans out there that want to come in and take photos or shoot some video or whatever it might be for no reason other than to share it with other fans. Not everything is a profit, and you can control everything to the point where you sterilize the environment because people were still there taking pictures and filming and this and that and the other. And I just I don't understand where these artists get to this point now where they, they make some of these poor photographers sign contracts saying that you can only use 12 images, you can only give them to city pages or whoever it was that you got the photo pass through and on and on and on. Because at the end of the day, I mean, they're making so much money, they don't know what to do with themselves. What does it matter what the fans are doing? And like I said, most of them aren't doing anything other than just having it as a memento and enjoying it. You and know, I'm frustrated. I, 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 I totally get it. And so playing devil's advocate on here. I yeah, think please it, do. I think it's become part of the, a few have ruined it for the many, i.e. a few ruined our poll to the point where we've had to sterilize our poll moving forward, the way it's going to work, the way it's going to be managed, because a few people have screwed it over. Um, I think you, there's a case where you've had photographers take photos who their attitude is not like you. Their attitude is, I'm taking these photos because these photos are money to me, and I'm going to make money off of this. And Which is I, fine, I, but I, that's I, professional I'm, equipment. But but they, you know, in this day and age, you can take damn good photos without going in there with a nice big, I don't know what you call it, the fixed yeah. lens. You know, the little pocket things will do damn good jobs, and if you're a photographer who's got the connections, you're going to turn around and sell those photos. You're going to create books. You're going to do whatever you want with them. And the artist one day finds out from a fan who bought this book and goes, well, these photos suck, and I just spent forty nine ninety nine on this book. And the artist is taking the heat for it, not the photographer. Photographers took the money. The artist gets all of the heat because the fan, the fan thinks the artist is involved with everything that happens out there, and they don't understand contracts and licensing and approvals and they just don't so it gets to the point where where we we're talking with izzy last week you know paul can't freaking break a guitar and throw a guitar into the audience anymore because one fan sued the band yeah it's just it's, it's just disheartening yep. but sometimes i feel like the but even though you may bring up a valid point i think it goes beyond that i just think it's a control thing more well, than no, anything it, else. It, it is a control thing. They want to control what photographers are coming in and doing what. They want to know 
who was there taking pictures so if those photos show up somewhere they know who this guy is and they can go after him and they've got a contract to say you can't do that which so I understand, is, but it, I'm talking is, about the regular control. fan going through. But I'm also talking about just the regular fans coming in. I, I totally to me, there's a big difference. No, well, there is and there isn't. I mean, again, a photographer could just go in as a regular fan, and for Christ's sake, you got you could put something in your pocket that's got 15 megapixels and a zoom that could take you from the soundboard right up to Nikki Six's nose, and get great pictures. So. You know, it, it used to be an easy-to-control issue. The only way you got a good picture, I mean, you know, I'll think back to when I was going to the shows in the 80s. The only way you got a good picture is you had a photo pass and had real camera and you were in the photo pit because otherwise little old me was trying to sneak in my 35 millimeter or my 110 Instamatic by shoving it down the crotch of my pants. So when I got the pat down, nobody wants to grab you by your balls. You know... It wasn't an issue back then because those photos, and we as fans have plenty of them, the quality was crap. You could be in the front row with an Instamatic 110 and it still, still looks like shit. look like crap because of the lighting, because of the movement, and everything else. Technology is, has evolved so much that I can walk in with this thing and I can take photos as good as the best photographer could with the best equipment. But so that's my point then. If, if the technology is switched to that point and you have your cell phone and you can take those kind of photos, the genie's out of the bottle at now at this point. It, it really is. So why try to control it? I understand the whole professional photographer thing that you have just so many in there, you let them shoot for just so long and then you're done. But everyone else, like I said, it's just a sea of people taking pictures. That's all I'm saying. It's not like... If you stop them, all that you have alternative-wise is that 110 Instamatic. The point is, is like you said, with your with the cell phones now that have 15 and 20 megapixel cameras on it, people are still shooting. That's the thing; they're still shooting the photos. I, I, I and get so, it, you know. And I think most bands have just drawn the line at we can't take away cell phones. You just you can't no. do that anymore. Um, so the only thing we do is if you've got an actual camera, camera. That we won't allow in, even even though that camera, care. even though that camera probably doesn't take as good a photo as my freaking cell phone, they can they can differentiate that easily and say, all right, take that back to your car or go check it at Lost and Found. Right, but the thing about that is, is some do, some don't. Oh, I know, you know, and I feel like Nikki's trying to be like Gene. That's what it, you know, it's just you know, over control. I, I, I have no idea what the Motley Crue policy is. I do know. And I don't that, either. I, I so do that's know, why I said I, I don't know, know this. I do know that there are some bands that the policy comes from the band on down. Other bands are like, we don't care. It's whatever the venue wants to do. And venues enforce a policy. Why does a venue care? I have no idea. But, you know, there's been plenty of venues. I've gone, in, I've gone into little theaters where the venue is just like, can't even take your cell phone out and take a picture. I'll be, Which is I'll, 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 be I'll be in a theater and you know I'm snap quick picture and I turn around and you know getting tapped on the shoulder and security you got to take that away or out. And I, you know that's what? just a power trip. So and so a lot of venues are on power trips. They always have. I know been. it's just it's it's funny how they went from you know. Bring bring anything you want in to nothing. It's like it's come full circle. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't know what will how it will happen. I just imagine there's no way they're going to ever be able to say you can't bring your cell phone in because that's just mm -hmm. you, you can't. But they will. Probably... And they want the social media. You want to be. It's just like that kid who took this selfie with Paul McCartney and yep. Warren Buffett. You know, they, Paul got as much mileage out of that as the kid. Yeah, I think they're just gonna, you know, we can we can we can identify a camera, and that's not going to be allowed. The problem is when, you know, I, I've always wondered when like Google Glass becomes so prevalent, and we're all walking around with cameras embedded in our glasses. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, literally you've got a bionic eye, which is a camera in your eye because you had your eye replaced for whatever reason. What are they going to do at that point in time? Put a 
you must wear this patch over your face. You have to take your glasses off and be blind. You know, at, at some point in time, it's, it's going to be impossible to do that type of stuff. I mean, it will get to the point, you know, you just blink and your eyeball just took a picture. Right. Oh, absolutely. Your, con it's just... your contact lens is a camera. And, and 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 the only reason I'm bringing this up isn't so much for the Motley Crue thing. I just wanted to talk about it because it's important to me, and maybe isn't too many of your other, uh, of the other people out here listening. But I just don't want to see Kiss go down that path I, any more than I want Van Halen or any of other my any of my other favorite bands. I don't think Kiss will only because it doesn't matter to them at this point. I mean, again, why, but that's my point. Why should it matter to anybody? Period. End of story. I get the whole music thing and, and all that stuff but you know but putting the, out demos you know, again, and again venues you know at some point in time these artists you know we're not going to fight with the venue if that's the venue's policy we don't care that's it's it's the we're not sweating the small stuff and worrying about what the venue's policy is about a camera ain't worth it to them which i get but i don't think this is a venue thing i don't know yeah i don't know so it'll be interesting. I look forward to seeing the Kiss show this summer. I just would love to see him add some songs and stretch her out a little bit. Yeah, I'd love to hear why they aren't. Mm -hmm. Why can't but you? We'll probably never. We'll probably never get that uh, answer again. And as you said, not that I wouldn't go to the show, and because um, I would if I have the opportunity. I just missed it. I think I'm going to make a pilgrimage to Vegas and go check out one of the residency shows, which we could chat about right now. Um, I thought we were going to both do that. Well, yes, we can chat. So, okay. KISS announced officially the Vegas residency. Tickets are on sale as we're recording this for KISS Army Fan Club members, and on the 18th or 19th, I think they go on sale to the general public. They're doing nine shows between November 5th and November 23rd. I'll give you the exact shows here. They're, they're Wednesday, Friday, Saturdays for one, two, three weeks. November 5th, 7th, 8th. November 12th, 14th, 15th. November 19th, 22 and 23. 8 p.m. shows each night at the joint, which will hold about 3,200 people at the Hard Rock Hotel in Vegas. I've been to a show there, um, big place, big venue, general admission. Um, it'll be it'll be a good place to see a show. It'll be very cool to see a show there. And and as think you, I can bring my camera. Depends on what the hotel says. I'll have to ask Keith. Depends on on venue policy. A lot of times, seriously, that's what it comes down to. But um, as Tommy mentioned, we are pretty sure that we're going to find a show in there where we're, Tommy and I are going to go if, if we're allowed in. If we're not blacklisted. We've done everything contractually obligated so far. What, what's there to blacklist us for? I don't, I don't get when you even say stuff like for, that. For, that makes no for sense not to me. making Izzy take off the Facebook shirt and only censoring it. Mm. But anyway, well. we're, 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 we're going to find a time to go, um, go to a show, and uh, record an episode of Three Sides of the Coin while we're in Vegas. Where we record it, whether it's in our hotel room, whether it's at a strip club, a brothel, you know, I still want to get a fistful of hundreds hundreds <laughs> see if i can outdo terrence <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should do a kickstarter campaign and have have our listeners donate money for us to go to a brothel to see what happens <laughs> god oh lord um or uh, maybe to the the kiss mini golf mm -hmm. yeah so so we always have a number of questions, but here's a question for everybody. If we went to Vegas, would you be interested in coming to a recording of the show? Mm -hmm. I Watch think that's us a great two schmoes show. talk about Kiss. 
-hmm. We can sit there and throw our new guitar picks out at people. Because we're, we're getting new ones. Mm -hmm. We're getting new ones. Two more, two more versions coming. Thanks to Chris Medic. Yes, thank you, Chris. Um. Anyway, so yes, three sides of the coin. Is pretty sure going to be making a pilgrimage to Vegas for the Kiss residency. What show? I don't know. Um, but it should be pretty cool. I mean, the mm -hmm. the 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 one press piece about the show says it's not going to be the exact same show as they're touring right now, but it is going to incorporate the spider. Hmm. So I all all I would say is traditionally when bands move into the hard rock to do a residency of, of something like this, they do create a special show. Yeah. Just for the, I was for, hoping they do the suits. Who knows? Maybe. That would be awesome. Maybe, because one of the things that bands like about residencies is there's no load-in, tear-down. You know, you can set up something that's a little more complicated, and it's there for, you know, the three weeks. Right. So, yeah, which affords them an opportunity to do some special things that they don't normally do. Yep, yep. So uh, I would assume there's going to be a slightly different show. I would pretty much bet the set list will be a little different. Is this going to be a Kiss Cruise type of set list? Probably not. I would say it's going to fall some... This is purely guessing. It's going to fall between the 40th Anniversary Tour set list and a Kiss Cruise set list. You're not going to get the Elder played in its entirety. Damn. As much as we will present our set list findings to Tommy... You're not going to get Fractured Mirror, Rocket Ride, and 2000 Man played by Tommy. That as much funny. as you Ace fans want that. Want that. We're just going to be like, hey, come on, guys. There's only so much we can do here. Exactly. You know. But here, here's something I... So, it's cool. The, the, the residency's happening. We posted it last, I think it was Friday night. Like within an hour of the article popping up on USA Today, we were all over it. Um, but it just kind of was interesting to see the comments that were coming in. Overwhelmingly, the fans were like, this is cool, this is great, I'm making a trip. But sure enough, there was a handful of fans who were like, sellouts. It's over, they're selling out. And 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 I made a point, and there was probably about, I don't know, four or five, six of them that I did this to. I said, okay, please ex clarify. Explain to me what do you mean by sellout. Not one of them has replied since last Friday. Well, because and I want to mention because something. Because they don't, they don't have an answer to it. Well, and I want to mention something since you brought that up is, you know, Mike sometimes or <laughs> all the time <laughs> – gets unfairly cast as the devil uh, because of his stance on things. But the thing I want to say about that is, is he's genuinely a very kind person. Um, but you're not going to get anywhere to know that if you're going to come out and act like a jerk. So when someone says something on our page that Mike knows is false or, or has no merit at all, he's just going to call you on it. He's not being disrespectful. He just simply wants you to, if you're going to make a statement like sellout, why? Tell Just tell him it's, it's, why. It's Explain to us why. It's funny you brought that up because just today somebody made a comment of, Mike, you're such a stickler for accuracy. And I was like, okay, what, what am I supposed to just let somebody who's posting inaccurate, non-factual lies just... <laughs> Rewrite it's no, their it's history no big of the deal. Band. It's no big deal. Go for it. Yeah, I'm yeah. a stickler for accuracy. If you're going to say something, stand behind it. And and to the point of the Vegas sellout, I was a couple of them. I made a comment of so selling out nine shows in Las Vegas because that's that's admit yeah, it. these are going to sell out. They're going to sell out. Yeah. that's a sellout. But selling out Madison Square Garden, that's not. Or is it just plain Vegas as a sellout? Because they've played Vegas on every tour for many, many, many years. So they've been selling out. I'm just like, explain your logic to me as to why this is a sellout. 
Well, and Motley's done a couple of residencies there, and that's what a lot Motley, of people Guns are doing now. Roses, Things have changed. Def Leppard. It's, Look it's, at how many bands are playing at casinos now around the country. I mean, it's it, the music industry is evolving and changing. I just get tired of people accusing you of things that I just think are simply not true. I, and I get, it's unfair to paint with a broad brush like that, I, I think. A, I get a kick out of the comments coming in from all of the, the experts out there who understand how touring works and show production and everything else that would sit back and say, it doesn't make sense. It's bad for their career. That's not how touring works. Blah. blah. It's just like, so your band is playing where? I, I don't have a band. Ah, great. Or my band just played to 50 people at, at the local tavern. Got it. So you're telling a band. I actually told one guy, he said, wow, you were so on top of it. You ought to send in a resume to Kiss to, to apply for their manager. You just know yeah. so much about the business. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and yeah, I'm being okay. I'm being a dick, and I'm being an asshole to some people. And and but I'm sorry. I'm just calling these people out who make these just stupid comments. You know, if 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 you want to say it's a sellout, then say why is it a sellout? It's selling out. And and one fan said, "Here's the definition of what a sellout is: doing something." That you you don't like for money, like, okay? Then by that definition, they're not a sellout. No, they aren't. They've jumped on a lot of trends. You could say they're jumping on the residency trend after everybody else has done it. That's legitimate. But mm-hmm. why is playing in Las Vegas for nine shows giving you? I mean, why is that any different than playing nine nights in any city on a tour? I don't know. I don't know, and they can't answer it either. Yeah, that's the thing. So, you know, please, you know, make your opinions known, but back up what you're saying if it's even remotely odd. That's all we're saying. We're, you just, know? we're, just, we're just making you um, stand behind what you're going to say. If I hated Ace and Peter, I probably wouldn't be doing this show because it was the four original members that hooked me. And I still have the best memories of that whole period in my childhood. So why all of a sudden do I hate them? It, it's just, it's, you know, I was watching that Rush documentary last night, Beyond the Lighted Stage, and Getty Lee said something that just struck me last night. He said something along, I'm paraphrasing here, something along the lines of, look, we chose to to be musicians and and music is a part of our life but it's only a part of our life it doesn't define us it's you know i I, i'm a co-host here of mike's show (laughs) good answer yes man yeah yes but i i'm a real estate agent i'm a husband i'm a father i'm a friend there's other aspects to my life that are important so I just, I don't, and I, I want to have some people on, and I don't want to do it to belittle you, but I really want to understand how some of these people, it they take such an importance on something, whether it be Ace or whatever it is, and you can get so upset that you're practically going to have an aneurysm. I want to understand why you feel the need to fight to the death over something, why don't, you that, get, why don't you get Rick on? <laughs> Rick. Yeah. And there's that, a, perfect, like ex- there's a perfect example of somebody who I, I swear to God was going to have a brain aneurysm last night as he was he was trying to put me on trial. All right. So last week's episode, we put a black bar over Izzy's T-shirt, the face with the ace book, and it said content censored. Mm-hmm. And just so you guys know the real truth, nobody told us to do that. Well, of course not. And it's and it, to we, me, we, 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 us, us, too. It's, disgusted it, as a, wouldn't that be funny to do that and see what happens? Yeah, and it's not a disrespect to any member. When we come up with ideas like this, it's part of the bit. It's part of the show, and. Some people get it, some people don't. Rick, I've known for 
25 years. I, I think he's a hell of a nice guy. I've had nothing but great interaction with him. So I was actually a little surprised when you guys were battling back and forth like that. But, you know, it's our show. And even though Mike, everyone thinks it's Mike's show and that I'm the yes man. Uh, we actually do discuss stuff that we're going to do. And I was in fully support of that because I thought it was funny too, just to see if, you know, what would happen. See what would happen. And, but it's not any disrespect to Ace no. at all. God, you no. know? I know. But we're, I mean, we're screwing with Izzy more than anything we're else. With, totally screwing with Izzy. And, and, and if anything. Because Izzy's like a kid. And if anything, you know? I'll say we're screwing with the Kool Aid drinking Ace Fraley fans who we know are going to get bent out of shape over this. Even John Davey didn't get pissed. So you know it's cool. You know? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> John would have... It's just... Yeah. It's just... It's part of the bit. Just like everything else that we do. We're trying to inject a little humor into things. My God, I felt like I was on trial in a court of law there, though. It was just like you're out to prove <laughs> that I am the reason for all of this happening. Because... He's known Tommy for 25 years, which I've known Tommy for 25 years, too. Um, yeah. But Tommy would never do this. And 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 I the funniest part, one of the funniest parts was, I dare you to tell me this wasn't your idea. And I said, it wasn't my idea. And I said, what are you going to do? Double dog dare me now? <laughs> Well, and, and it'd be like you in a court of law on trial and it's a jury of 12 guys and they're all ace freely. <laughs> I was just like, dude, you've already convicted me before you even brought this up. He's like, you've admitted that it was another one of those fans who's like, you've admitted the truth. I go, I don't recall admitting anything. I mm -hmm. did tell like you. I, said, I did tell I, you it I was really, both of our ideas and we talked about it, but I don't recall yeah. admitting anything. It was just. It was well, so and like I said, I really crazy. like Rick. He's a super nice guy, and I've known him for a long time. And, and it, it, it just surprises me when this kind of stuff happens just only because we're just doing this as a goof. It's, we, do, we do it for fun. I mean, if Mike and I weren't having fun doing this, we would not be doing this show. And this may be one of the oddest shows we've ever done today, but i got to tell you, if Mike and I were sitting in a bar right now, this is exactly the kind of conversation we would have. If, we yeah, would if, not be breaking down Dynasty versus Unmasked versus whatever. Yeah, yeah. This is what we would talk if, about. If we were in the same town, like you are with a, you as in listeners with your friends, and you get together at you know Applebee's or wherever it is once a week to sit at the bar and have a beer, we Tommy and I would be getting together once a week at Sensors, having a mm -hmm. beer having some chicken nuggets or whatever deep fried bar crap they're feeding us. No offense, Joe Sensor. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, I, I don't remember where it was. It was either an email, a YouTube comment or something, but somebody said they drove a couple hours to go eat at Joe Sensor's. Oh, really? Yes. And did they like it, not like it? It was just what? a quick comment to say it was it was cool that they drove to Sensor. I'm just like, these people That's are dri awesome. driving to the birthplace of this show. Anyway, That's this correct. this would be literally, you know, we 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 had a beer a week ago. We're getting together having a beer this Tuesday night. So, Tommy, what what what's happened and what what happened in the last week? Oh, I went to the Motley Crue show and this is it. And I'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I just got wailed on on Facebook by this one guy. This is the type of stuff we talk about. And don't tell me you guys don't talk about this type of stuff as well. Well, yeah, and the other thing, too, is is that Mike and I don't think we're any better than anybody else. We truly don't. We're just regular guys, but we are very opinionated, and we just refuse to put up with bullshit. Yeah, I'm going to call it. I told somebody online, I said, I spent many, many years online not being able to state my opinion and having to turn my head and let all the crap just continue to flow. And when we started the Facebook page... I told Mitch and Tommy, I said, that's not happening now. I'm not going to let that crap happen. If I don't like something, I'm going to say it. So, yeah, it's just we're extremely opinionated. And if somebody's going to act like an idiot, we're going to point out and call them out for acting like an idiot. It's not Which because is why we called Terrence. It's not because we're any better than you. It's just because I'm calling you out for what you're doing. 
Mm-hmm. And we don't we don't care that you disagree with our opinions. We right. want you to disagree. We just want you to to make your point. Don't just go. You guys suck. You know. Don't don't <laughs> don't take me posting two photos of sold out crowds and turn around and use that as a way to call me an ace hater because I'm taking cheap shots at ace for falling off the wagon apparently. <laughs> Or Which using sense, you, or using sense. that to spread your misinformation. It's just like you, no matter what you might think or feel, there's two photos here of 16,000, 20,000 people at a show. Well, it yeah, is, and it, it is it, what it, it is. You can't deny it. You can come right, up with every it, excuse you want, but it is that what it is. And if, if someone or more than one person hadn't posted how KISS is over and they're losing fans and blah, 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 Mike would never think to post that photo. Just like there's some idiot on, I don't know, wherever it is, saying that we're losing fans left and right and da, 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 da. And it's just like, great. If that's true, so be it. But it isn't. And so base your comments with fact. And you can't. So, of course, Mike's going to call you out. That's just what he does. Yeah. You know? You got, you, listen, anything you do in your life, you better be, you got to be prepared to be held responsible for what you say. And the only reason that Mike honestly reacts to this stuff more than I do is because my job is taking care of my clients and driving around and showing properties and all that sort of thing. Mike's job in working with artists puts him online all day long where he's doing different tasks for Dream Theater, whomever he's representing. And so he's constantly getting the notifications right away. So he's the one who usually jumps on it. Yeah. That's the only difference. But believe If me, I had more time, I would say stuff, believe me. We are chatting every day where I'm saying, what do you think about this? What do you, should I post this? What, you know, so nothing happens here without the two of us discussing it and agreeing upon it. I am his and, moral and, conscience and, 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 and me telling Tommy to just say yes. Mm-hmm. Like I sent him a, I sent, I sent like something the other day that I made while we were chatting, and I'm like, you've got to see this, but you can't share it. <laughs> you are the pot stirrer, man. You are the pot stirrer. I might, so, I might take the heat, but you are back there in the kitchen cooking it up. Yeah, you think that he's doing this. <laughs> But it's really me. I'm the one who's doing it. And yep. Mike is the pump. Okay, Tom, put it up. I'll take the heat. I, I'm Peter Chris on stage performing. Tommy's under stage playing the drums. Yes. Oh. So, yeah. And, and so the reason we're going into all of this nonsense today, for the few of you that are still listening, is we just think every once in a while the show needs a little bit of a tune-up. And we want to share why we do what we do because we want to hear from you. And I got to tell you, this has been um, an amazing experience for me. I've learned a lot about myself. I've become uh, better friends with Mike because we spent so much time together. I've met some wonderful, wonderful people. Um, I value talking with so many of you. But then also, too, there's just a few of you that... Where do I Where do I um, send this? Oh, we, we need that for advertising. We need to pay pay for the picks. I, I can't wait to get pay, my pick. I, I thought that was what I had to pay for the Payola. yeses. What I pay, that's what I pay for the yeses. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what's funny is there's actually people who believe that. It's just crazy. It, it really is. So um, that's why we, that's why I wanted to, it, this was, oh, by the way, this is my idea today. I wanted to talk about this stuff. Yep. It was Tommy's idea to turn the microphone over to him. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, it was um, my idea we to do a show all about our set list, but can't do that this week. Nope, can't, but we're going to try <laughs> again next. So, uh, for the few of you that are still listening, Thank you for homework. sticking with us. We, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, homework. We, we mentioned one. Would you be interested, if you're in Vegas, of coming out to a, a, okay. a live recording? It won't be broadcast live, but we'll record it there no. with you. I got another one. Do you agree or disagree 
that KISS should step it up. Whether you'd seen the Motley Crue show yet or not, do you believe that they should reinvent themselves? Going beyond the spider, but the gag, should they be changing some of the way they do pyro and some of these other things to give you something new? And and, and if you think so, do you have any ideas what would be a cool gag? Yeah. Well, let's, let's be realistic here. You know, we're, we're not trying to create something brand new, never before seen, but you know, is it as simple as, yeah, Gene should just fly out to the soundboard and Paul should fly up to the ceiling? That's your gag? Let us know. Well, and, you know, and, and one, I, I had a thought the other day that, I, uh, that would be kind of cool I'd like to see is what if Eric Singer's drums, the whole set, would go all the way out to the back of the arena? I mean, you're only giving up a couple of rows of seats, so you have a thin platform. God it knows runs there's out. plenty of unsold seats on, on this tour. Right. But you know, <laughs> wouldn't it be wouldn't it be cool though is if he went out there and all four of them could be on that riser playing a song and or two and back and forth. That would be something I've never seen before that would be kind of cool and very doable. You know, so we're looking for ideas like that because you never know if the band is listening. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Who knows? But I got to tell you, there's been more than one thing that's been said on this show in the last 85 episodes that we've done this that have come to fruition. And I'm not taking credit. I'm just saying, hmm. And, and I am sending the set list results as crazy as they are to Tommy because I know, oh, he'll, yeah. I know he'll, get a, he'll get a great laugh out of knowing that the Ace Fraley fans <laughs> voted for him to because we he's emailed us before so we're sending it directly to his email absolutely he he made a change to his website because of our show's discussion on the band member websites and that we know for a fact because he emailed us and said thank you yep so we know he was listening so they do actually listen to their fans i just think sometimes they don't have the ideas because they don't have the people around them to encourage them to try something different you know they need more less yes men I got a great yes man. <laughs> 85 episodes of the beautiful yeses. Yep. No yes. 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 <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. Thanks for sticking around. Till next week. I think we got a special guest next week. I got to confirm it. Oh, we've got some cool stuff coming up. We yeah. were disappointed by the last ones who stood us up, but hey, and they're not it is what back. it is. They're not coming back. No. No interest in that. So, Forced us to talk to Izzy for an hour, which is freaking painful. Jesus Christ, I bet he still hasn't come up with an idea. That stupid Jesus. t-shirt of his got me in so much freaking hot water. <laughs> oh, it's all good and it's all in fun. So everyone just chillax. Yep. All right, guys, later. As kids say, bye. Get your Three Sides of the Coin t-shirts now available and shipping worldwide. Head over to shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. Download a free copy of the ebook Kiss School of Marketing, 11 Lessons I Learned While Working with Kiss. Head over to noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold.